Welcome to the Great Lakes Fishing Podcast. We're at the Greater Niagara Fishing and Outdoor Expo, and I'm with Rick Hijeki, and we're going to talk some spring brown trout fishing on Lake Ontario. Rick, thanks for joining the show. No problem. Thanks for having me. And Rick, you are a charter captain. Tell me a little bit about your, your charter. Uh, my charter is, uh, I started out of Rochester about uh, the third week of March. Um, one of the first boats on the lake every year. I just can't wait to get, get fishing. And um, I'll fish from March right through the end of uh, September. Uh, beginning in March, April, I'll fish out of Rochester, uh, the Genesee River. And then I'll move the boat for the month of May up to Wilson Harbor, which is by the Niagara River, the Niagara Bar, which is very famous for a, uh, a spring salmon bite. And then after that, I move the boat back to Oak Orchard, which is kind of halfway in between the Niagara River and Rochester. Um, so I'm pretty much a Western Basin fisherman. And uh, when we're not chartering, we're usually fishing tournaments around the lake from Toronto to St. Catharines, Canada, Wilson, Oak Orchard, Rochester. And one of the cool things about this brown bite you were telling me is, you know, it, it basically, as long as you got open water early spring, you're ready to go. So tell me, tell me about that. So the cool thing about spring browns is they are literally right on the shoreline typically in less than 15 foot of water. So no matter what kind of boat you have, you can get out there and chase them. You've got to pick your days. In the springtime, we get a lot of weather. So as long as it's a, a south south wind with the way Lake Ontario lays, a south wind is, is a very easy wind to fish out of. But <clears throat> as long as it's a south wind or a light wind, you can get out there in just about any boat. Like I was out there this past Monday in my 21 foot aluminum boat um, fishing for these browns, which you can get out there any time of the year over the winter. Um, after they get out of the streams, they come back to the lake and mm -hmm. you can catch them. But most people are ice fishing, snowmobiling, doing whatever they are over the winter. And uh, they don't really start thinking about fishing until March rolls around. But um, the cool thing is you get out there with your boat and most of your lines are all flat lines. Uh, you're using little stick baits, anywhere from three to four inch stick baits that dive three to seven, eight foot. Um, and you're using small spoons behind dipsy divers and you, you let those spoons, or you let, let's, let's start with the stick baits. The stick baits you're letting out anywhere from 50 to 100 feet behind um, a board that kind of pulls your lure out to the side. Mm -hmm. So the planer boards will hang out in the side of your boat and you, you, you take the lure, hook it to a release, slide it down a tow line, and we can run three or four lures on each side of the boat. And um, so when a fish hits that, it pulls it off the release and you fight the fish. We also run small spoons behind a dipsy diver and that just is a small trolling device that's circular and you can make it so that it pushes away from the boat and it dives. Um, so we'll run those out anywhere from eight to 10 feet. And, um, and those are usually really good when the water is dirty. Uh, one of the key things with spring brown trout fishing is finding a little bit dirtier water. And um, a lot of times you can, the, the south winds will clear up the water. Mm -hmm. um, so the best time to fish them is after a blow or after a good rain when you've got water coming in from the creeks. You find that dirty water. The dirty water holds the heat from the sun. So you've got maybe a degree to three or four to difference and those browns get packed right into that dirty water. So you keep trawling through there and you'll have a successful day. So you're not talking about deep water. We're not talking about downriggers. We're not talking about any of that kind of specialized stuff. This is something that really the average guy could go out and do. Yeah, I mean, if you've got spinning rods, trolling rods, bait caster rods, you can do you can do this kind of fishing. Um, there was years when I had a bass boat where I would just run the creek mouse and I would cast stick baits into the creek mouse and catch them, which is a lot of fun too. Mm -hmm. But the trolling aspect of it is very simple. I mean, you could literally go out there with a boat that has two rod holders, stick two rods in there with lures hanging off the back of it and just troll around. Um, and be successful. And you're talking 12, 15 feet of water? The, you don't have to be any deeper than 15 foot of water. You can, mm -hmm. and there's fish out there, but the majority of your fish are inside of 15 foot of water. If you've got lures that you can get into three, four foot of water, mm -hmm. there's times when the water gets so clear and those browns get pushed up on that water, the dirty water on the beach, just be from the, the waves rolling in, mm -hmm. whether they're six inch waves or whatnot. Um, if you can get in there, you can be very successful. But yeah, generally 15 foot of water or less. What kind of speeds are we pulling? Two miles an hour in GPS. We're not running, since you're fishing so skinny, we're not throwing a probe down in there in the water because mm -hmm. um, it shouldn't change that much. There shouldn't be that much current in 10 foot of water. Sure. Um, so we we hang out, when the water's really cold, we might get down to one eight on GPS 
typically we kind of hang out at 2.0, but you can fish them as fast as you want. I've got friends that will fish three miles an hour on GPS and they won't pull stick baits. What they do is they'll, they'll do the same thing with the planer boards, but they'll put a small split shot in front of a trolling spoon and they'll troll a little faster and that's a different presentation and they do just fine at three miles an hour. Mm-hmm. You can cover a lot of water with at three miles an hour. Sure. And you were talking earlier about, you know, if you find a spot of productive water, you're circling back around going through that again. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. I mean, so February, March, there's a lot of good colored water because we've got a lot of weather, right? So mm-hmm. you've got a lot of wind and wave action. So there's typically long stretches of dirty water. Sure. Um, but as you get into April and the weather starts to get nicer and we're getting those south winds that are bringing the warm weather up, um, the waters will start to clear. So when you do find a pocket of colored water, if you just troll through it, grab a few fish and keep going, it might be a bad day for you. Mm-hmm. You spin around on that and just keep going through it and that can make all the difference. Sure. What kind of fish are we pulling out of there? Brown trout, they're average. Your average spring brown trout's three to four pounds. They're, they're nice silver, small fish. Um, but we've got brown trout Lake Ontario that go up to 30 pounds. A 15 pound or better brown trout Lake Ontario is really a trophy brown trout. And as far as I'm concerned, you know, it's my opinion, I think brown trout are probably the prettiest fish in the lake. Um, the one thing in the spring that you have to be careful about it, and browns, I have a lot of customers that love to eat brown trout. Mm-hmm. But in the springtime, you're getting a lot of fish coming out of the creeks. And those fish have been eating eggs and bugs. Is really all their diet's been for a few months now and they've just gone through the spawning process. So they, their bodies had some changes to it. Those bigger browns that have what we call fall colors where their oranges and browns are more vibrant, mm-hmm. typically have a paler meat, okay, because of their diet. And I try to tell customers to let those go back. Number one, the meat's not gonna be as good. Um, and those are our, our breeding fish. Uh, the smaller three to four pound browns that still have the silver to them, uh, tend to have a very vibrant orange meat in them. And, you know, so, and, and they seem to be the ones that my customers say, yeah, these taste a lot better than the, the big spawners that just came out of the streams. So you just need to make sure that those big ones go back. And that's really getting to be kind of the way with just about everything these days. Uh, you know, I, I fish in the Midwest and really even trophy bluegills now, people are like, we gotta, we gotta put those back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you gotta protect the fishery. I know it's a put and take fishery. Our DEC in New York stocks everything that goes in that lake and there is natural reproduction that goes on. But for the most part, our fishery is a put and take fishery. But, you know, I, I fish trophy walleye up in Canada mm-hmm. in the fall time and you can't catch a 15 to 18 pound walleye if you're killing them at 12 pounds. And that's the same thing with brown trout. Brown trout live, four, five, six, seven years. I'm not a biologist, but you know, if you're killing them at 10 pounds, they're not gonna make 15. If you're killing them at 12, they're not gonna make 20. Right, yep. So eat, eat those nice three pound eaters, put the bigger ones back. What happens with these fish as the as the year goes on? So with brown trout, um, as the water's warm, they tend to like a thermocline. So you can catch these browns from just about 12 months out of the year in mm-hmm. Lake Ontario. But as the water warms up, and thermal clines start to set up. In New York, our thermal clines will start to set up late May, early June. Um, brown trout love when the thermal clines hit bottom. So where it could be 20 foot of water, it could be 90 foot of water in the summer. You find where the thermal cline hits bottom and you'll find the brown trout. And a lot of times you'll find a good pot of bait. Um, so there's your, if you wanted to chase browns throughout the summer, you would want to find the thermal cline. But as we get into May, a lot of us focus on the western end of Lake Ontario, and that's where the salmon bite really starts to kick up. Our first tournament, our first salmon tournament, is the end of April in St. Catharines, and that's pretty much what I call the kickoff of salmon season. And after that, we're on the Niagara Bar chasing salmon um, in Lake Ontario, and the Niagara Plume is what we call it. It's the, it's the water coming off of Erie. It's very green, mm-hmm. and it's very nutrient rich, and a lot of the bait fish are in that water and those salmon tend to come up there before they come anywhere come up anywhere else in the lake. What's that like? It can be crazy. First off, we've got some derbies and tournaments going on, so the boat traffic can be very bad on the weekends. Um, most of the time, everyone's playing nice, but you can run into a few, a few bad guys. Um, but the salmon fishing can be explosive. I've had days where, you know, you're catching 40, 50 salmon a day, um, and it's just, they're just tearing, they're shredding your gear up. Uh, so you hit it right and you find them, 
it can be game on. So we were talking Browns before, and, and, and you're really on the New York side. Is that same bite occurring on, on the Ontario side? The only place that there's a brown bite on the Ontario side is on the South Shore. Um, so it's, it's it's kind of interesting that Lake Ontario has lake trout, Chinook salmon, steelhead, and brown trout. And there's some other smaller species in there, but they're pretty insignificant. Um, on the South Shore, in most ports, we can go out of just about any port and go and chase those four species and be fairly successful with it. The Canadian Northern Shoreline, which we fish tournaments up there a couple times a year, it is strictly a salmon steelhead. You will not catch lake trout up there. And you typically don't see browns up there. Um, they those, those two fish tend to hang on the South Shore. Uh, don't know why, I'm not a biologist, and I don't really, doesn't interest me to find out, but, but yeah, so those four species will hang out in the South Shore, the North Shore, is salmon steelhead. Now on the South Shore in Canada, there's a few areas where you can get into brown trout. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the few guys that know where it's at do very good at it, but they're not too interested in brown trout in Canada from what I understand. They're big on salmon and that's what they want to catch is big salmon. Sure. So you just talked about guys knowing where they are and I don't want you to have to give away your spots, but how do you find these spots where you're gonna find brown trout? So in the springtime, these browns are looking for any sort of warm water, any kind of water that can bring um, nutrients in that's dirty, that'll attract that heat. So what you wanna look for is you wanna look for any sort of creeks, ponds, bays, or rivers that are dumping into the lake. If you find that, and you that's where you're gonna find your colored water typically. And when you find that, you're gonna find the brown trout. Awesome, is there something about brown trout in spring that I haven't asked you about that you think is important? No. Covered it all? I think we have, yeah. It's, it's, it's Like I said, it's a very simple fishery. And uh, it just takes a small, I mean, you could take a rowboat out there. I see kayakers out there all the time pulling a couple rods and rod holders and paddling around. I think that's the coolest thing in the world. And they don't have to worry about, you know, paddling a few miles offshore. It's right there. You mm -hmm. know, you can put it on any beach and um, and just go find the right water and you're, you're on them. Awesome. People want to find out more about you, get in touch with you. How do they do so? Uh, follow me on Facebook. I've got a, a Facebook page, crazyyankeesportfishing.com. And after every charter, the uh, the pictures from the charter go up there with a description of what we caught them on, how we did it, where we were. Um, that same report is on my website after every charter, um, which is crazyyankeesportfishing.com. Um, but I keep those updated after every trip. And uh, if you, even if you're, you know, I'm not necessarily, you know, even if you don't book a charter with me, um, if you are a weekend warrior and you want to know what's going on or if you want to know what the hot lure is, you can trust what I'm putting on there, not BSing. You mm -hmm. know, um, I the way I tell people, um, if if nobody's using this resource, the state's not going to spend the millions and millions of dollars they are to put these in the lake. You know, so if you're not catching fish, you're not going to come back, whether it's on my boat, your own boat. Um, so if everyone's catching fish, everyone's enjoying this resource, the state's going to continue to support it. Awesome. What's it like being on a boat with you for the day? Um, you're you're going to get your balls busted. I hope that's <laughs> not too much for this this podcast. Um, you know, it, it's a good time. We're going to have a good time. We're going to catch fish. Um, I, I work Monday through Friday. I, I chartered full-time for a few years, mm -hmm. um, but... Chartering full time doesn't pay your health benefits, doesn't pay into your 401k like other people will. Um, I find that Friday when I get out of work, I look forward to getting to the boat, getting ready, and getting to go fishing. Sunday, I hate leaving the boat, but I'm still ha I still have that positive attitude of I can't wait till Friday gets here to come back here and go fishing. So, um, you know, some people I've been on boats. I know a lot of charter captains from the tournament fishing I do, and I've fished all over Lake Ontario. I've been doing this since I was five years old. So if you want to count my experience when I was nine and 10, I've got 35 years of experience on Lake Ontario. And, um, you know, these guys get, they get grumpy after a while. It, it wears on you mm -hmm. when you're running doubles for three, four days in a row, you just kind of get in this zombie mode. Um, but a day on the boat with us, you're going to have a good time. You're going to catch fish and, uh, and we're going to make memories. Awesome. Rick, thanks so much for doing the show. No problem. Thanks for having me. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you next time.